What up, y'all? Locks and Low Firearm Reviews here today. Hold up, bro. What's we got? I'm out of uniform. Out of regs. Hold up. Ugh. All right. All right, cool. All right, we're back. Welcome to Locks and Low Firearm Reviews. Here's your host, Locks and Low Firearms. All right. So today's video, guys, is pretty exciting, right? So just when I thought nothing could beat the AR-15 platform, you know, I love my ARs. You know, I got plenty of them, like I said, you know, I was trying to sell all of them, but a few of them, right? So, long story short, you know, I went up to Alabama, we're working on a two-day class up there uh, for firearm instruction. One of my students up there, um, he had a firearm. Um, you know, he said you know, it, was, it wouldn't shoot, it wasn't firing, it wasn't working like it should. So, you know, I looked at it, you know, when I immediately saw it, I, you know, I, I liked it. You know, I was like, that looks like a nice gun. So, you know, I was talking to him about it, going through it, looking at it. I was like, you know, yeah, it's kind of rusty, kind of dirty. Looks like it's been outside. Looks like it's also been sitting for a while. Um, you know, I was messing with the action because he was saying it wasn't shooting. It wouldn't shoot. He tried different ammo through it. it wasn't shooting. So I was, you know, racking the slide, looking at the firing pin, pulling the trigger. I didn't see anything readily that, sh that, uh, that immediately popped out like, hey, this is wrong. So, you know, I was talking to him, I was like, I could probably get it working, you know, if I had to take it back home to Jacksonville, you know, work on it and fix it. You know, he was like, oh yeah, sure, go ahead, take it. You know, it doesn't shoot, he didn't want it. And so, you know, I was like, all right, cool, another project gun, I love project guns. So, you know, I took it home, uh, you know, I was going through it, again, didn't see anything, you know, that popped out that would say, all right, this is probably the issue right here. So, you know, I had Keith look at it. You know, we took it apart, um, went through the parts, did some parts inspections on it, uh, put it back together. And I'm not sure what we did when we took it apart, but it would actually kind of, it started shooting um, like one round at a time. Um, I didn't have a magazine, so we just had to put it around the chamber and, and it would shoot. Um, so, all right, cool. Uh, I did a little bit of cleaning, not in depth cleaning. But I did a little bit of cleaning, um, so the action feels a little uh, smoother when it shoots, and now it picks up around when it shoots. So you no, know, you put a mag in there, and it'll actually cycle through the mag. Um, so I was like, all right, cool. It worked. Um, so we took it out, zeroed it at like 60 yards or some shit, just on a steel target. It hit. And then uh, you guys, I'll put a video throughout of me using it in our. I don't know if you want to call it DMR, sniper training, where the fuck, long range, whatever. Um, took it out and, you know, I was able to ring uh, steel at the 250 yards. So, you no, know, it still got some more work to do on it. But right now, I'm liking this project um, and it's slowly coming to fruition. And, and honestly, no bullshit, y'all, it's become my favorite gun. Um, even over my AR-15s. You know, I love my AR-15s, but this gun right here... This one takes the cake. So a lot have been talking for three minutes now. What gun are you talking about? Well guys, I'm talking about the SOCOM 16 and 308. This is made by Springfield Armory. And like I said, 308, SOCOM 16 with a 16 inch barrel. And then even better, it's got the shoulder thing that goes up. Plus 10 kill. <laughs> All right, so this right here was, um, you know, minus the optic uh, that was um, given to me by Keith just to put on here to zero. Um, I'm gonna get my own optic later, probably this. All right, so 16 inch barrel, 308. All right, not gonna lie, this has become my favorite gun right now. Uh, 
it just feels so handy and in a 16 inch barrel because normally when you get like the the civilian version of this is the m1a right it's basically the m14 like the military has but in a semi-automatic version that's really the main difference between the m14 and the m1a right same thing when you look at like an m16 or m4 versus an ar-15 it's basically the same thing but the m4 m16 versions are full auto where while the ar-15 is a semi-automatic version for civilians that's really the main difference All right um so no the original m1a m14s came with a 22 inch barrel so you know this thing would have been out there been heavier too right so um time goes by you know i guess they didn't like the long ass barrel so they made different versions uh, i think it's called they have like a scout version it's an 18 inch barrel and then they have the socom 16 like this with a 16 inch barrel 16 inch i i'm fine with uh same length like a standard ar-15 and it just points a lot better and it feels more natural to me because now i'm not very big five nine 160 on a good day um so it just feels like like it feels better than my ar-15 i'm not gonna lie yes it's heavier but that weight feels it's like a good weight it's like a, a security type weight where you pick it up and it's oh my god this thing is so light i feel like if i dropped it it would just break into 30 pieces or i had to hit somebody with it and i'd break my stock but this right here boy i swear to god i could beat somebody's ass to death with this thing and it'll be good to go especially with this metal uh butt plate boy if i just fucking mm, in somebody's fucking mouth <laughs> Or I could just, you know, just, uh, just put this metal right here on your chin. Just send some teeth flying. Oh, man. But this is definitely, you know, if if I had to pick one rifle to run out of this house with, like I said, it is be this right here. I can hit out the distance. I can easily make it to 600 yards with a 16-inch 308 barrel, right? Um, but as far as I'm within 300 yards hitting somebody with this, bro, that is... That's a lot of force. The 5.56, five, uh, they work, they kill people. A lot, a lot, a lot of people dead from 5.56. Five, five, so don't believe that bullshit. Oh, it's a 5.56, five, five, man. It's not good to kill nobody. Ask people since Vietnam and up, all right? Hella people been dead by 5.56. Five, five, um, but in that same instance, a lot of people also die by 308. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just like one of those if I'm gonna hit somebody at 250, you wanna hit them with a 5.56, five, five, a rock? You wanna hit them with a fucking boulder and that's what this is it is a fucking boulder when it hits somebody now when you shoot steel at 250 with a 556 like you might hear a little tick you know a little ting but when you hit it with a 308 you know you hit it you <laughs> and it literally just makes me smile every time i think about ringing steel this thing because it's just one you know it has this nice this really decent muscle break you do i thought this thing was going to kick like a mule because it's 16 inch and a 308 but this thing recoils like my AR, like it, it's like a little bit more, but still it feels just as smooth, but like, you know, I, I go boom and it doesn't knock me off target where it's like, like some shit like that. It's more of like boom, boom, boom. And so this muzzle brake really does a good ass job at taming this 308 recoil, All right? But, and that part too, right here. Oh, nothing, nothing sounds like it. Right, nothing just nothing just sounds like that. You know, you might get an AK, it sounds nice, but this this M1 Grand type action. I see one of my favorite guns is the M1 Grand. Like I'm a history buff. Like everyone has like these cool high tech guns, but I love history. So M1 Grands, M14s, M1 carbines, BARs, um, Thompson submachine guns. <sighs> Uh, I even like the the Japanese Arasaka rifles. I like the Lee Enfields, uh, most in the Ganser Strait. Um, I do want to try um, the the Swedish K31, so straight pullbacks, bolt action, like all those, bro. I I like those um, those vintage nostalgic guns, you know. Um, and another thing I really like this because, like, one of the, my favorite war movies. Granted, I hate that it happened in Africa and Somalia. I'm talking about Black Hawk Down, but again, when I watched this movie, I was a kid, so I didn't know all that shit. But still, if you look at it as just a movie, you no, know, 
Well, two of my favorite weapons are in that movie, which is the Randy Shugart with the M14 and the, yeah, Gary Gordon with the, his car uh, 15. So those two weapons right there are really some of my key favorites. If I could have two guns and just bug out with and just be good, good, it'd be, you know, that M14 and that car 15. Um, so, so having, literally having something like this, man, uh, I'm a huge, huge history buff. So just having a little piece of history, just the N1 Drag Strand action itself, uh, it just, it just, it just gets me going, you know? And then on top of that, I think the the M1As, the M1 Grands, those iron sights are the best iron sights ever made, in my opinion. Like, even without this scope, you know, I would be fine just straight up using iron sights. Like, I just love the peephole because it's a little bit, I feel like it's wider than like normal. So you really get that full, you can see like the forks and then you see your sight posts and then you have light coming around it. So you can really kind of see your target. This is light coming through. It's not so tight where it's just like, all you see is like really your front sight post. Um, really love the iron sights. Love the weight, love the feel, love the history, uh, love the recoil. Um, it came uh, when he gave it to me with the Springfield mount so I can put a scope on here. Uh, so you see I have put a one to six uh, Vortex Viper PST. I'm sure Keith is gonna want it back, uh, which is fine, because I'm thinking of throwing this three to 12 on here. It's been laying around, you know, so it's something I don't have to spend money on. I feel like a nice three to 12 on here would be good. Um, yeah, if I really did want to drop money on it, I think a one to eight with the Griffin reticle would probably be perfect. Um, but a three to 12 would be dope. Um, especially, you know, he's going to want his one to six back or else I'm going to end up keeping it. <laughs> All right. And so this is my project gun It's not completely done yet. So what I did, I know for you nostalgic guys, no, don't bastardize the stock. You got to keep, you got to keep the stock. I know guys, I know. But for actual, like, when they made this rifle, they was not thinking of body armor uh, when they made this, because body armor wasn't really a thing back then. Uh, I think, what, 1950 something, when the M14 was like adopted into the US military. So body armor wasn't a thing. Soldiers wasn't war running around with fucking swimmer cuts and shooter cut body armor. So having the rifle designed with body armor in mind wasn't there. So when you do wear in body armor, there is some limitations, like in the video I'll put up, like shooting from that rock pile, trying to get an awkward position with this stock that's non-adjustable. And then, you know, with the scope height, you're gonna really want a cheek piece, uh, cheek riser. This doesn't have it, so you're kinda chin welding it. Um, and then an awkward position in body armor where it doesn't fit in that cut between your plates. Um, and so you really kinda end up having it like in your forearm, like your bicep, and you're doing some shit like that. But even like that, I was still able, like, you know, put my crosshairs on a, just a random target, not even really know, honestly know the distance, because that's how the drill was set up, is unknown distances. Uh, you just know it's between 100 and 250 yards. So, you no. Know, and so all I would do is just kind of swing my crosshairs, hold center, boom, ding, boom. Dang! But well, I hit like a fucking truck. And it makes me smile every time I hit steel with this thing because it's just so loud and so forceful. Mm. I, I just can't imagine just hitting somebody just straight up in the chest. Just boom! 308. Like, god damn. <laughs> but yeah, so like I was saying, I got me an Archangel stock, um, CQB stock. So if you Google SOCOM 16 CQB on Google, um, Springfield Armory selling them with the Archangel stock in there, so it's gonna have that stock. Um, uh, it's gonna have M lock up here, so I can have a bipod and a light. And then, as far as the scope, I said, no, I got this for right now, but I probably will end up throwing this 3 to 12 on there. And I got four 20 round mags coming in because I, I tried to buy three 20s and three 10s but they were out of the 10 round mag. So I just like, all right, fuck it. I'll just get four 20 rounders. And so that's what I did. Got that coming in. Um, 
clean up a little bit more rust because there's kind of rust on here on the operating system. Not too much where it really affects it, but it's still, you know, you still want to clean that up. And then um, I'm thinking about, you know, getting a suppressor for it. I could get me like a, a YHM Turbo 30 Cal, take this off, get the YHM uh, muzzle brake. So it still has that uh, the muzzle brake on there to tame recoil. And then I can just attach the suppressor to it. Then I'm have to take out this lug, replace it with a KNS, I believe. And so that way, when it's suppressed, the excess gases blow out the front and doesn't just you know, fuck up my action because it's slamming back so hard that back pressure. And yeah, and that I think that should be really about it. I want to do for this because this was man. Like I said, if there's one gun. I had to take out of this house, it'd be this right here. Right, this can do everything. You really need it to, cause like the talk, uh, what we always talk about, or main talking nowadays, bugging out, um, civil war, race war, some, some kind of thing where you're gonna have to have one of these for self-defense, not only self-defense, but for other practical uses, hunting, like, right? So, this would definitely serve both purposes. I can definitely, it's short enough to where if I had to clear a house with it, I can. Um, if I had to step out, you know, three, four, five, six hundred yards, I can um, and drop somebody. Or if I have to go take this hunting, because, you know, again, there's other things you're gonna have to consider besides always getting into a gunfight when you bug out or do whatever. Um, so you're gonna have to be cognizant of that. Well, shit, I'm out here in these woods fighting people. I'm at the same time. I'm gonna have to feed myself. This will definitely drop pretty much most most animals in North America, right? So I don't know too many animals that can take a 308 and it's not shit. So this definitely serves multiple purposes. I think more purposes than any of my AR-15s can really serve. So this hands down right now is my favorite gun that I own. I wanna get this baby working. Um, definitely give me some 308 ammo for it and I'm gonna try <laughs> I'm gonna try not to burn this thing out by the end of this, end of this year but we'll see because I, I enjoy shooting this shit, shit so much like the more I shoot it the more I keep wanting shooting it so we'll see how it goes but yeah guys this is my project gun right now and no bullshit this is my favorite gun like I just can't I can't even put it in the words just it, it just feels like a rifle, you know? It just feels like if I was gonna get into a fight and I was gonna really just go to just go to town, just do something like like that, this is what I would want. It just feels right. Just even my hands, how I hold it, it just feels right. I just love how I can just point it and it just naturally goes where I want. Great rifle, great rifle, can't lie. Um, a lot of people, uh, have M1As, SOCOM 16s, something of this type platform like this. I uh, just call them M1As. Um, and they love their M1A, you know. Great rifle, good history, still being used in the military nowadays, so. If it's good enough for the military, it's good enough for me. And I think that's about it. Um, yeah. Can't wait to get this thing up and running the way it really should be. And y'all gonna be seeing this gun on the channel a lot more. So, SOCOM 16 guys is a great gun. I'm not gonna lie, it's locks low to approve like a motherfucker. So if you definitely want a SOCOM 16, I'd highly recommend you get you one because it's handy. It's, it's definitely a handy, versatile, nostalgic, historic piece of American badass metal. So can't get much better than that all right guys so hopefully you like the video hopefully you know i didn't bore you with my my love lust for this rifle and yeah like i said you'll be seeing this a lot more on the channel when i get this baby working but on top of that if you want to see more of me um you can sign up for a firearm class on loxalofarminstruction.com um get classes by me in person i am working um well working with a i guess you'd call us a cadre i don't know so it's me the tactical savages and north florida tactical so 
know, yeah, he does a lot of shotgun. So if you really in the shotguns and want to get better with shotguns, follow the Tactical Savages and make sure you sign up with him. So yeah, sign up with Tactical Savages for shotguns. He also does rifle pistol too, but you know, shotguns is bread and butter. Um, then we also got North Florida Tactical. That's our corpsman. Uh, what's a corpsman? Basically, the Marines don't have medics, so they go to the Navy and says, we need medics. And so Navy gives them a corpsman. <laughs> right, so, you know, so if you want any kind of like that tactical medical training, T, Triple C, P, March P. Um, All right, here, hold on. <sighs> doc, is that you, Doc? Yeah, that's me, doc, man. Doc, I'm about to die on that. No, I'm about not. to die, Doc. We can't. Probably not. Oh my God! I mean, I ain't feeling a thing right now, homie. Who has it look? How does it look? Tell me. Your Tell penis me how does it look? is gone, but it my wasn't. penis is it still there? Is my penis still there? I guess my penis still there. Yeah, man. I, I don't have a microscope right now. I'll check it. What happens if somebody gets shot? Type shit. Um, definitely sign up and uh, hit up North Florida Tactical. Um, like I was saying, um, uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, social media. If you have land, private land that you can shoot on and you are looking for a two day tactical class, you must have at least eight people. All right, uh, especially because this is gonna be traveling. All right, so have at least eight people um, and some land to shoot on, safe land to shoot on, not in the backyard where, you know, house here, house here, house here, house here. No, rather be like in the middle of nowhere or something, or at least have a berm. So if you're shooting all our rounds going to the berm. So if you have private land to shoot on and you want a two day tactical class, you know, pistol, shotgun, rifle, uh, medical, um, email me, hit me up or at Tactical Savages or North Florida Tactical and then hit us up. So, you know, eight people, it's gonna be 250 a person, two days, right, Saturday and Sunday. Um, if you want a consultation service, hit me up on there. Uh, ask you questions, all the type of questions how do I get body armor? What type of plate carrier should I get? What type of battle belt set, shit like that? Definitely a consultation service will help you guys out, you know? Um, and, oh yeah, Locks and Low Firearms. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, locksandlowfirearms.com. If you wanna support Wagunda, wagundanation.com. And on top of that, I think that's everything. I'm tired of these intros, outros, it gets so long. And yeah, so stay dangerous, Locks and Load out.